Hey again, and welcome back. On my last logic gate video, we did a OR gate and an AND gate, and that was a lot of fun. So I figured I'd keep the fun going. I still have my breadboard all set up, but this time we're going to do a NAND gate. So a NAND gate means that if both, it's like an AND, right? It's like both. A and B transistors have to be high to do something, just like an AND gate. But in this case, it's like a reversed AND gate. So we'll always have a high signal, we'll always have a high output, unless A and B, both together, A and B, so that's where the AND comes in, are active. So it's actually quite simple. It's really the opposite of our AND gate. So we have our six volts up here. Then we're going to start off with a 4.7K ohm resistor. And then we're going to take this and that's our output. All right, so you can see already it's high. Then we're going to go to our first transistor via the collector, like so with a 10K resistor. That's why I left them in, because they're 10K. And then again, collector on a second transistor. Ten K at the base, and then we're going to ground. So as you can see, we're always going to have the 6 volt outputted right here. Should be a bit less with the voltage divider, but anyways, it'll be a high over here. If A goes high on the base, there's no ground path because this one will still be low. If B goes high on the base, there's a ground path absolutely right here. But this one here is not conducting because the base is low. So if A and B are high, then these will become sort of like a, a short circuit. They'll conduct. But we have this 4.7K ohm resistor to stop this from being a short circuit. And our output will be pulled low. So let's give this a shot. This should be pretty simple again. So we're going to take our 4.7K, we're going to put that to 6 volts, like so. I'm going to angle it a little bit so we have more space. Put this like this. So that should be well in the 6 volts. Now one of these uh, wires are um, a little iffy, <laughs> as we found out last time. I haven't replaced them, so we're going to see if we can get this working on the first try. So over here, I'm going to put the output. Now if I turned on the circuit right now, this would be high because again, both our transistors need to be low in order for this to do anything. So again, this will be our A over here. So we need to go from the 6 volts, or actually from the output, so over here, we need to go to the collector of this one, so emitter base collector. So its collector is on this side. And now from the emitter, we need to go to the collector, emitter base collector of our B. And then we need to go from the emitter of B to ground. All right. So now I'll put in my power supply leads. If we did this properly, which again, there's no guarantees. When I give this circuit six volts, this LED should turn on. When I hit switch A, this LED should stay on. And when I hit switch B, this LED should also stay on. But when I hit both, as long as both are on, 
sending highs to the bases, this LED should turn off because we're going to be shunting the voltage through A and B. So let's give it a shot. Okay. So our LED is high. I'm going to hit A. We're expecting this to stay on. It does. It uh, brightens a little bit. I'm not sure why. I may have mixed my wires again, but we'll see. B. We're expecting this to stay on. That one does not brighten a little bit. But again, I think we're good. You ready? Here's the moment of truth. So one and then boom, it turns off. So we're shunting the output through the both transistors to ground. And so there's no voltage left to turn on the LED. So again, this is successful. I can't believe it. I can't even build it, build a kit that works much less some DIY logic gates. That's pretty awesome. So let's tear this down and go on to the next logic gate. So next up is the NOR gate. And NOR is just like OR, except it'll turn off the LED, which should be a constant high. So again, we have six volts, 4.7, K ohms and output. So as soon as the circuit's on, the output is pulled high. Next, we have one transistor through the collector with a 10K resistor on the base. And this will go directly to ground. Then we have another transistor, transistor 2. Not sure why I did it like this. It's going to be a little bit more confusing, but same, same. Through the collector, transistor B, I should say, and then also to ground with a 10K. Oh. 10K ohm resistor on the base. So this works exactly like the NAND gate, except now only one of these two, or both, need to be on in order to pull the output low. So when we turn on the circuit provided with 6 volts, the output will be high right off the bat. Then if we hit A, if we make the base of A high, by providing 6 volts. This will shunt all the voltage down to ground. So there will be no voltage left here for an output. If we hit B instead, same thing. Over here it will pull all the voltage down to ground. But if you press A and B together, it will do exactly the same thing because now you only you just have two ground paths, two ways to shunt. So it's a NOR gate. If either one or both are active, this here will go low. It's pretty smart. You can actually do a, just a regular OR gate with, uh, with uh, PNPs, and I believe it would work the same. You just need a low on the basis, but using NPNs to make NORs is amazing because you're like reversing the logic output of sending these high. So let's put this together. So 4.7K once more on the 6 volt rail. So 6 volts to here. Then we need our output to the LED like so. Perfect. Now we need our 4.7K, so over here, to the collector of both. So emitter, base, collector. I'll actually remove these because these are to flip my breadboard around. Emitter, base, collector. So collector is over here. Like this. And that 4.7K ohm resistor 
we'll actually make sure that if we activate any one of these, we're not doing a dead short between 6 volts and ground. Okay, same deal on the other side. We need to go from here, 4.7K, this point here, into emitter base collector over here. That's the collector. Ooh, this contact is pretty loose. Interesting. Maybe that's why I have some issues. Now we want the emitter to ground. So that's this guy here. Emitter base collector to ground. Same deal with this guy. Emitter base collector. So emitter is on that side. Like that to ground. And I think we should be good to go. One and two. What do you think is going to happen? So what we expect to happen is this LED to light when I turn on the power supply. Then I expect when I press either the A or the B, doesn't matter, or both, we should be able to turn off the LED. So let's see if I did it right. Uh-oh. Oh, I see the mistake. No, there is no, yeah, there was no mistake. What the heck? What took so long? So click A, LED turns off. Click B, LED turns off. Click A and B, LED turns off. Brilliant. This is amazing. Oh, look at the dicky connection we have, though. Not sure what, oh. Don't know if it's over here. Nope, it's over here. I don't know. This breadboard's getting pretty used, I think. But it still works. Able to make my circuit function. Pretty awesome. All right. So we did two logic gates, just like last time. But this website actually has another cool setup. Let's do that one. So the interesting thing about a logic gate is it doesn't really specify the amount of transistors. A, a NOR gate simply uses either output or either input, sorry, A or input B. If either of those go high, it should uh, pull the output low. This website has a really cool situation. So again, this is NOR again. So if I grab my six volts here, 4.7 K ohm, and output like this, they have a way to do this with only a single transistor. And it makes a whole lot of sense. So I'm gonna bring this right to ground like that and that's the emitter and that's the collector okay so there's your single transistor what would happen if you just take a 10k ohm resistor 10k here and another 10k ohm resistor 10k here and you connected them both to the base of this transistor. Well, think about it. Output is high upon power up. If you click A, there will be a 10K uh, base resistor activating this transistor to shunt all the voltage down to ground. Kind of the same thing that happened here. But if you press B, you get another 10K resistor to also shunt this point uh, to also activate the base and to shunt the voltage to ground. You know, in fact, you could probably do this with only one 10K, but I guess the visual is nicer with two. So let's build this NOR gate as a little bonus. So again, 4.7K ohm, and we're actually going to remove one of the transistors. Going to move the base 
over to this one. So 4.7k ohm, we'll do it up here because we have a bit more space. Over here. Okay, output. Grab this guy here and output it to our LED. Very nice. Now we want from the 4.7k to the um, collector of the transistor. So here's the collector and right over here. And then we want the emitter to go to ground. So emitter to ground. Now we're going to connect up our power supply. I'm going to connect it more this way. Hopefully we get fewer dicky connections. Like so. All right. Now let's turn this on. When this thing turns on, the LED should go high because it is being fed uh, 6 volts from this 4.7K resistor. When we press A, we should energize the base of this transistor to shunt the voltage down to ground. When we touch B, it should do the same thing. And A and B together should give us the exact same result. So it's a NOR gate, which functions exactly the same as our previous NOR gate with only one transistor. That's good to see. The LED turns on. If I click this switch, it should turn off. And it does. This switch should also turn it off. And it does. And then both together. Yep. Either or. So another completed logic circuit. So again, I encourage you, if you have these parts at home, I mean, two NPN transistors, actually just one really, a couple 10Ks. I don't think these 10Ks or this 4.7 are important values. I think if you just have, you know, in the thousands of ohms, you can use that. A couple little jumpers, which you can use cut off wires or, or, or uh, cut offs from your uh, resistors. And a couple switches. I just like these micro switches, but you can use toggles or little push buttons. Try this. Let me know if it worked for you. And once again, thanks for watching.